Even before I got into radio, I knew that he was somewhat of a knucklehead because, uh, you know, he alienated White Sox fans by immediately charging them money for a free product that they had been getting on TV. So he screwed that pooch up. But I also liked him. You know, he picked up Fudge, Fisk. He, he also saved the White Sox. With Jerry and me, it's always been love-hate. He's been mad at me forever, but we've tolerated each other. I think, you know, he'll always blame me for him getting rid of Reniac and Gallus, Rob Gallus. I was the major culprit there. I've been mean-spirited to Kenny Williams, and he deserved it. Garrett Jackson, Ed Farmer, name him. I was hard on the White Sox, and he didn't like it. That's just the way it goes. I've been in his head for years. And you know what? I said, if I was your right-hand man, you'd win more than you're winning now. He told me I reminded him of his father. I go, did you hate your father? <laughs> Everybody, it's Aldo Gandhi, and I just want to let you know really quickly that our swag shop is reopened. DeepDishTees.com is where you go, and that's Tees with T-E-E-S. Clever name, guys. They're the new home of our merchandise. You can get T-shirts, you can get caps, you can get coffee mugs, you can get hoodies, you can get all sorts of good stuff, and you'll help out the bar room with the purchase. So head over to DeepDishTees.com. Listening to the Mike North Advantage, and it begins right now. That's right. The Mike North Advantage starts right now. I am Old Gandhi. I'm Mike Swingman. Mike, how are you, my friend? What are we up? I'm looking. I'm looking for us. Are we tweeted out? Are we tweeted out? I'm just looking. You know me. You know me. Although I, I'm paranoid about everything. I heard a noise last night. I've been up since. I don't know where the noise came from. I'm looking for it. What can I tell you? How you doing, my friend? And welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Bears Bar Room. Check all the shows out there. That's what we do. And it's good to see today, as uh, we were commenting earlier, mm -hmm. uh, sort of got the Paulie Walnuts look today. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's good. We got to go it. back a little bit with the game. Hey, hey, not for nothing, T. You know what I mean? <laughs> Richie Aprile's a problem, T. You know, I, I, I'll tell you what. I love that show. I can't get away from it, even when it's not on. When they have yeah. the marathon, I watch it. But I know they helped kill Tony Soprano, even though B.B. told me he overate way after the show. But every scene either has him eating or eating a bowl of ice cream on his couch watching a war movie. So uh, how many takes did they have to take? I don't know. I wasn't there to count. But I uh, believe me, I think uh, uh, James Gandolfini ate gallons of ice cream. Uh, when they were doing those scenes where he's sitting at home watching it. Believe Absolutely. me, they're eating at every scene. <laughs> they go over this guy's house. I mean, they, they don't like each other, uh, but he goes to Giant Zach's house to eat dinner. I'm trying to figure this whole thing out. <laughs> How are you, Aldo? I am doing great. So did you like the new Sopranos movie? Have you seen that yet? I give it a C only because I like them. They should have taken the kid. Mm-hmm. And made it like a Bronx tale, like my buddy Chaz Palminteri, and followed all the characters. Instead, they just confused the hell out of you. It was a mistake. I'll never watch it again. I watched it once. It's no big deal. Uh, it, just do it like Chaz did. From Gandolfini's sons, from a young Tony's view, 
and then watch the other guys progress. I don't care about all the other garbage. I really didn't. So I think it was a bust for the most part. But what are you going to do? You know, there's a lot of things going good right now. And, uh, uh, oh, by the way, can I just bring up something? Sure. I'm just going to say this. And I, it, it, this is not a political thing. This is a, a media journalistic thing. Right. Katie Couric should never be on the air again anywhere, okay? Because Ruth Bader Ginsburg, to – I'll tell you a story about Katie Couric in a minute. But Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who I've never had an axe to grind with, did I always like her politics? No. But as it turns out, it looks like she was pretty fair about a lot of things. And what Katie Couric did was when Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Ginsburg said, you know, Kaepernick's wrong. Anybody that kneels on the flag is wrong. You shouldn't disrespect the flag. I think it's stupid. She took a huge story, could have united America with that story, because then, as Eldo knows, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was as influential a woman who's ever lived, right. as far as the times go. Mm -hmm. And if they take and listen to her, there are people on the left that would have said, you know what? Maybe she's right. And there's people on the right that go, man, I didn't think she was like this. Instead, she helped hurt her legacy by making her look like a one-trick pony by, and also by saying, you know what? I didn't think she knew what she was saying or something to that effect. Are you out of your mind? Mm -hmm. The woman was sharp all the way till the end of the day. And Katie Kirk, whether it's writing the book that she lies about or anything else, should not be on the air. I don't care if it's Yahoo Yo, hey, whatever it is, should not be on the air after what she pulled. Because you know what? A lot of problems came from that. Cities burning, problems, BLM, a white supremacy. And Katie Couric, Katie Couric helped perpetuate that. And that's not journalistically sound. And the University of Virginia, you know what? You should give her a call. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I, I would agree with the part that no journalist should ever no. change what somebody else is saying. If they, uh, you know, sometimes it's okay for a journalist to call back the person that they've interviewed and said, I want you to know that I'm reporting this and and and, and leave it at that. But I think you would have kept it in as a producer. Uh, I think to. there is no doubt in my mind. I've known this guy for four or five years. We've been involved in a lot of things he knows i would have kept it in because it's it's making news it's putting your station out there it's it's doing the things that are right as but i wasn't a journalist and i know what she did is wrong i knew aldo today i i said this morning i said wait till i talk to aldo about this because i know what he would have done he would have kept it in and then maybe because i know my friend there might have been a problem at the station who knows he might have been talked to. I don't know if we can do this. Anybody that saw The Insider with Pacino and, and, and you know knows that this has been going on forever. This isn't a recent phenomena, but this is blatant to make the highest I ranking woman official I've ever that I consider credible look bad. And I think that's unconscionable. All right. We have a lot of sports to talk about. Yeah, let's get to that because I just well, I, I just figured the Kaepernick thing, whether you agree with him with Colin or not, I never yeah, I wouldn't do it, but he, he has the right to do it. But it that was the sports tie-in because a lot of problems happened oh, yeah. in the NFL because of that. Well, oh absolutely. Uh, there's yeah. no doubt, doubt about yeah. it that there, you know, that whole issue permeated yeah. sports and and yep. other issues too. Uh so and I'm ready to talk about other things now. All right. Well, uh, we have a potpourri of topics to cover, <laughs> um, and just judging by the uh, amount of comments in the chat room, let's start with the Bears Packers because B Packer Week is always huge in Chicago, and the way the Packers have dominated the Chicago Bears since Brett Favre became a Green Bay Packer is really incredible. I mean, they have whipped the Bears during that period, with the exception of a short period during Favre's uh, last few years with the Packers. What does Packer Week mean to you, Mike North? Well, this week, if Justin Fields wins, it means a lot to me. Uh, that's all I've ever cared about. I said it on Twitter this morning. 
I didn't care what kind of stats Mitch had. I didn't care what kind. I looked at wins and losses. Uh, for instance, I bring up Cutler was 1-12, and 1-13. and 13. By that record alone, if it's Ohio State head coaches, uh, okay, losing to Michigan, okay, they would have had three coaches in that spin that they were 1-13 and 13 against Michigan. The Bears kept that. They, nobody ever talks about it. And also it's 57-57 record. Also Mitch losing. Uh, to them, but I think Justin Fields, uh, Mitch was one and one and four. Uh, Justin Fields has a shot. The, the spread's four and a half, Aldo, but it's not because of Justin Fields. He figures out a way to get it done. I don't care what his stats look like, but it's the defense. The surprise to me is the defense, and I did say after the first game, if you play back, if you play vanilla, if you play like the other two guys did after Fazio left, or like the last guy did, you're finished. This mm-hmm. kid, the new guy, Sean Desai, is aggressive, mm-hmm. taking a little bit of a deal on Buddy Ryan's book, uh, putting pressure. Mm-hmm. Max seems interested. Quinn is really looks like the guy they, they went to pick up. Yep. Uh, but the four and a half point spread seems low to me for the Bears. Now, last week the Bears were gifted, no doubt about it. With with there was no way in hell that uh, the Raiders won in that game. Not after the Gruden stuff, none. If I'm any kind of guy on that team, and all this stuff has come out, and you know there was more, which was being leaked out. Mm-hmm. I never saw a team so disinterested. In playing for a coach in my life. And then I realized, wait a minute. Yeah. These guys aren't going to play for him. Mm-hmm. Not after what he said. Whether you think it's racist, it's not, it's this, it's that. No, it's up to the players who are playing for him to make that decision. It doesn't matter what Aldo thinks. doesn't matter what I think. And I saw a disinterested group that said, you're going, buddy. Mm-hmm. You're going. Eric Carr still loves them, but didn't like what happened. There's no way they were concentrating on the game plan. Now they're coming to a different animal. I'm just praying if they win this game, it strengthens Field's case, mm-hmm. okay, that he wins games regardless, and right. that's the most important thing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's funny that you say that because yesterday uh, Matt LaFleur, the head coach of the Packers, said statistics are for losers. I I just want to win the game. And uh, he was asked to elaborate on that. He says, you know, because you could turn statistics to mean whatever you want. Yep. My, my number one interest is to win the game. He also went out of his way, Matt LaFleur did, to praise the Chicago Bears defense, saying that it is not only a great scheme by a really brilliant uh, defensive coordinator, but talented players who are playing with great effort and that's exactly what you just said mike uh great effort they seem interested again right (laughs) well i'll tell you i'll give you a perfect example i'll give you a couple of examples first of all somebody said to me the other day why you got against justin fields i go i'm not i was for mitch we were 29 and 21 and made the playoffs twice in four years it's not easy to win in the playoffs especially when you're playing green bay Mm -hmm. i was for wins 29 and 21 i throw the stats in because like like uh, Eldo just said, folks, and he's sharp. The media has made the stats work against Mitch. If you look at what he did, and then you look at the preseason game against Buffalo, you know somebody's getting a good quarterback next year. But I'm not blaming Fields. Fields is put in that situation, and he's handled it well. He's taken hits, and he keeps on getting up. He, a lot of quarterbacks would have bailed out of that game last week. Mm-hmm. I could think of one in particular that wore bare a bear uniform a few years back, not Mitch, that would have bailed out, said he was too hurt. Not that he wasn't tough, but the way they were hitting fields, the thing that I said, he's a healthy RG3. I'm sticking to my guns until he gets hurt because if he keeps playing like this, Aldo, I've said this. I said it last week on Byron. I said it on AM1000. I just want him to survive the next four weeks because it's tough. Yeah, it's definitely very tough. What do you think about what 4,000 Clover says here, that Gruden went in with a game plan to rough up fields, flag or no flag, because he thought the Bears' offense was too weak, but the Raiders' offense would just be good enough to beat the Bears' defense. He was wrong. What do you think about what 4K says there? I think he was up in the middle of the night 
with one eye open looking at the ceiling going, I wonder if any more emails are coming out. <laughs> I, I don't even think, I don't even think he cared. I think he was hoping because he took from press conferences before the game even. Hey, hey, yeah, I'm not like that. Let's move on. It doesn't work that way. Right. No. I, I agree. He handled it wrong, but he lied. Mm-hmm. He lied. Exactly. You can't be telling people you're not a racist. You know, take it from a guy who has been called that by people that have no idea about my hiring practices of the past, about uh, whether it be female, whether it be black. I had them all. I'd be basically, I hired them all, gave everybody a chance. And when people called me that, I just say, give me a for instance. And then they sit there because there isn't one. Honesty is the best policy. You, keep, you don't last 30 years in this business if you are that. Mm-hmm. You end up like John Gruden. Yeah. That's how you end up. Because sooner, and believe me, folks, I know a couple people in the media in this town that could that could wear the sheet. I'm just being honest with you. Mm-hmm. That's Four my case. Opinion. 4K says he doesn't think Gruden cared one bit about those emails, but I, I disagree with 4K. I think he really did care because he knew he, did, what he, had he cared once he found out. <laughs> That's right. To say you don't, to say you didn't care about emails that destroy almost every walk of life. Mm-hmm. Okay, I saw something, and and I know they're going to find anything they can on Gruden. Yeah, and and just the Even last, I went after everybody, but the one the one tweet I saw, although that was unbelievable, was with Mitch Trubisky mm-hmm. during the quarterback cramp. Mm-hmm. He goes, "Who do you like?" He goes, well, right now I'm listening to Drake. You know what he says? You should try Van Halen. Okay? (laughs) Drake's no good for you. Uh, Basically, that's what he said. So they're going to find things, and they're going to try, which might be ridiculous, because I don't like Drake, and I like Van Halen. Yeah, That doesn't make you that way. It's the emails that matter. That's why the man lost $60 million, period. Yes. What do you think about what Chris Watt says? He says, why do you think we lose so much to Green Bay? It's like finding the meaning of life. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you why, and I'm hoping the Bears change their philosophy. I have never seen teams that are just rush four guys against Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. I mean, Buddy Ryan Ryan proved to everybody, Mm -hmm. if you don't have four guys that can rush, I'm going to rush five. If you don't have five, I'm going to rush six. I mean, there were times they couldn't get to the quarterback, he'd rush seven. You got four guys back there, but what they didn't realize is by the time the quarterback gets the snap because of the athletes they have, he had about a second to look downfield because there's seven coming at you. If the Bears play, let's rush four guys and make it easy, you know, and let him just play pitch and catch, we're getting, we're going to get beat. We're going to get beat because I don't think the Packers will play that way against Justin Field. Yeah, I agree. Now, the, the danger in that is that great quarterbacks really love when defenses blitz against them because they know if this guy is blitzing from this side, that means there's going to be an opening on that right side. And so they, but the, but the trick is, is to have defensive backs who can guard receivers. And, and keep containment, L. Keep your containment on the ends. Exactly. Every time I see a fake handoff by Rogers and he rolls, the right end's over there by having a hot dog. <laughs> When do you wake up and find out that there's certain things that he does? And I know what he's going to do. If he makes a handoff, you know, very rarely people go, God, this guy is unbelievable today. He's got everything covered. Mm-hmm. I got up at three this morning getting ready for the show, folks. Okay. <laughs> then I saw the Katie Couric stuff and all this. And then I saw Joe Montana off a $100,000 investment at a, at a place called GitLab make $42 million. Deserved. <laughs> Deserved because guys like Terry Bradshaw made one hundred fifty thousand back in the day in him. Um, uh, but 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 seriously, when you look at it, you got to rush a ton of guys against him. And if you play pitch and catch, you know, I mean, I had the Bengals last week. Huh? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> minutes, I mean, I relived Parky. Oh I relived Parky. I relived it. The guy hit the uh, the the, the goalpost twice. I got a push. Thank God I didn't have the two and a half. Some mm-hmm. some people got Green Bay at minus three and a half, and some people got Cincinnati at plus two and a half. They lose by three. They won both bets. But the Bengals should have won that game. Yep. So, so I think the Bears, if they 
play aggressive defense, and we get a couple turnovers. Mm-hmm. Because Rodgers doesn't look all that great, but he does look great. You know what I mean? It's one of those deals. Right. Uh, there's times he's he's not as – it's hard to say he's not as consistent. I will say this. Tom Brady has 15 touchdowns and two interceptions. And there's a prop bet out today mm-hmm. that you can bet that Brady, yes or no, listen to this, Minus 300, or plus minus 300, that he's going to throw 45 touchdowns, which would be more than his age of 44. Wow. That's a bet I would love to take. I think he's going to beat that. I really do. If he beats that, he's the MVP of the league, without a doubt. If he beats that, he's MVP. He's been unbelievable so far. While Mahomes is struggling, I think think Herbert and Josh Allen are going to stub their toes. Mm-hmm. I really do, sooner or later. Uh, Brady's sort of like Alabama. You're allowed a couple bad games because of uh, the seven rings and the same thing with Alabama. You're allowed to lose one game. Yeah. I mean, I heard somebody today say they're fifth ranked in my poll, mm-hmm. but if somebody loses in the front four, they're moving right up, regardless that they lost to Texas A&M, who was right. just an okay team. Right. Well, I, I believe that Brady is in that conversation as the greatest player of all time. In any sport. In any sport. And so when he retires, they, they've got to come up with a trophy that's called the Brady Trophy. And I, I say that with with the bitterness in my voice because I, I've never liked the guy. I, I, you know, he's first of all, he's great looking. Second of all, he's, mo- he's married to a model. Third, he's got some, so much money. Fourth, he wins all the time. So why should I like him? No, I don't like well, him. you like me. I'm good looking. <laughs> I got some money. We have fun. I mean, look at this. I'm 69. Going on, going on 59. Come on now. I got my marbles. Look at you, Al. You got your own look. But here's the thing. I told you. I told you three years. Look at the tools out in the court. Three years ago, or four years ago, I don't know how many shows we've done. I told Eldo, get over it. And I'm telling Carmen, too. I tell Carmen, get over the Brady hate. Because you look dumb. He's making everybody look stupid now. True. Somebody, True. Look, look, look. I have all the respect in the world for people. Mima Kimes. Mima Kimes and all these other people. Two weeks ago, they're telling, they're telling everybody Roethlisberger is through. Right? Uh-huh. Right. The, the next, last week, I'm going, no. And me, you know. Peyton Manning was as good as as Mima Kai uh, as uh, as 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 Roethlisberger at the end. I go, are you are you kidding me? Because he's had a couple bad games. So last week, two uh, he throws for two hundred fifty yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, and a hundred twenty two quarterback rating. Enough. Enough. The guy knows how to play the position, but you're going to lose sometimes when you're that age. Not everybody's Tom Brady. Yeah, that's very true. Somebody put up, uh, it, it was Mule. Mule says the Packers have serious holes on yes. offense and defense, and that yes. is so true. I mean, I outside think of- Justin Fields, if he's allowed to play his game, if they roll him out, we can win this game. Yep. Outside of Devontae Adams, they are weak at the wide receiver position. Their red zone scoring is down 30% from last season. They're having trouble in the red zone. That Their offensive line has had multiple injuries. Their defense has had injuries. They might be without their two starting cornerbacks. So this might be a great opportunity for Justin Fields to throw some of those deep passes like he did against the Detroit Lions. So this is shaping up to be a game that I think the Bears can steal. And not only that, at at the very least, cover. It's the Packers minus four and a half. The money line is is minus 200. The over-under is 45. That's one that I don't know whether it should be over or under. I think it might be under, but... Uh, I like betting on the Bears and taking the four and a half points. Yeah, I mean, last week we went one and one. Um, I took the money line in uh, Alabama. Listen to this, for 25 bucks, I lost 300 because they oh lost the game goodness. on that. But I backed it up by betting 500 on Texas A&M, nice. plus 17 and a half. Mm-hmm. But I will never take the money line again for that kind of money. And I say that every year, and then I do it one time, and you learn your lesson and you move on. I'm not going to lie. I'm one and one mm-hmm. on this show. I would lean with Aldo, folks. The Bears are in a good spot here. It doesn't look that way because of the past, because of the trends, because of inept coaching, uh, because of lack of resolve on defense. But this uh, this kid, Sean, is how do you pronounce his last name? Because now I got to learn it. Because to say 
Is it Desai? Desai. Yeah. Yeah. I the, last week before last week I was calling the new guy. Um, <laughs> he's now, a- now I got to get his name right because uh, he's got his guys playing hard. So I yeah. think we got a shot. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, Q from Cincy, uh, who was really still hurting after that game, Bengals game. Oh, my. I felt like him. I was going to fly out there and we could have been miserable together. <laughs> God, I, says- I thought they were going to win twice, Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> really? I Green Bay missed kicks too, so yes, uh, uh, Crosby missed what two or three kicks. Yeah, so this was a game even... the Bears could have gained ground on. No, yeah, Cincinnati exactly. couldn't close, yeah, and now Joe Burrow's Joe Burrow's. How about this? He's got a throat contusion. Yeah, that yeah, is it, wild. The wish of most media members in this world that happen have that happen to me. <laughs> it's, hard to <laughs> it's hard to break steel. It's hard to break steel. Hey, let me tell you something. You opened me up, my larynx made of steel. <laughs> Plus, I got two huge tonsils to black into black. <laughs> I never had my tonsils out. They're the size of golf balls. I can barely breathe, but I'm enjoying myself. There you go. Uh, Q wants to know, if do you think Joe Burrow could win the comeback player of the year against Dak Prescott? Only because he's not on. Look, Joe Burrow. He's playing good football, but I think Dak Prescott right now has the inside track. So you yeah. got to give uh, give it to him. I, I will tell you this. I mean, uh, he's playing better than I thought, so I think it's Dak right now. But Joe Burrow's been doing well. He's another guy that might get killed by the end of the season. My God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but who do you think bought the house the last three years? <laughs> That's right. I mean, to accumulate all the money you've made off me over the past three years, okay, <laughs> and to look at that one bet, okay, I buy you steak every week. One week you get oatmeal, and you're going to disown my ass. I know how it works. <laughs> what have you done for me lately, right? And by the way, Chris, unlike most handicappers, and although I make, I took a beating, so I'm not going to feel sorry for you. You went with me, but my God, we're plus 300 units in you. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious oh god all right um anything else regarding the packer uh bears game i mean I, yeah i, I just want to ask you one last question about that. yeah sir I mean, ask any I, I, I could go all night long like lionel richie and by the way the breakup is on tv again where i got that line from vince long uh vince Vaughn. But, yeah, I could talk about Forrest Gregg and how Ditka dominated those teams. Yes, but please. Like somebody said earlier, it's been few and far between that we've done that. Yes, but I, I would like to ask you about Forrest Gregg because I, that topic came up the other day. Is Forrest Gregg the dirtiest head coach in the history of the Bears-Packer rivalry or maybe even the NFL? He's in the team photo. Yes. I mean, what, <laughs> what, they did to, what they did to McMahon, uh, I remember they threw Peyton over the bench. Yes, out of bounds. Uh, that was all for Greg teams. Mm-hmm. Um, I do believe at that time, mm-hmm. I would have paid thousands of dollars to take and watch Ditka and and, and Greg fight in a ring. You know, yes. in oh their fifth. God. Oh, that would have been a bloodbath, man. Mm-hmm. Greg, you Greg know? is a big man. Forrest Greg, a huge man. But yeah, he was bigger than Mike, yeah. And Forrest Greg looked serious. And that guy, I don't think, missed a game hardly. Yeah. I mean, I love those Packer teams that you grew up with. I respected them. I'm sorry. I love Paul Horney. Yeah. I love. I mean, they were just so much better than the Bears. Bart Starr, Lombardi, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, for, I know the line. Fuzzy Thurston, Forrest Greg, Jim Ringo, and then Jim Ringo. That's why I'm like an unofficial, nobody wants to talk to me about this NFL historian. Jim Ringo walked into Vince Lombardi's office okay. and said, with an agent, first time it ever happened, Lombardi's behind the, the desk with the short shirt, uh-huh. looking like the grocery store manager in Ted. You know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> right? That's how Lombardi dressed, like the grocery store manager in Ted. You know, in the, in the movie Ted. And... He says, wait outside for five minutes, okay, and I'll get back with you too, okay? They're waiting outside. He trades Ringo to Philadelphia. <laughs> and then they got Bob Hyland. Ask Packer fans. It's just as good. Oh, so that was a different time. 
Yeah. And and the other side of the coin is yesterday Aaron Rodgers was asked if he could name all the quarterbacks for the Chicago Bears. There have been 19 of them since he entered the league. And Rodgers says, yeah, I can do it. He got to four and he says, no, I don't have enough time to think about it. And it was like kind of a slap in the face yeah. to yeah. Chicago Bears fans. He does have that kind of cocky smirky attitude towards yeah. chicago well why wouldn't you ask me how many super bowls he's won it will take me a second one <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something when he started in the league look at the guy now he's look at the guy now he looks emaciated and he's got a, a man bun on this guy's like out of it now okay i'm gonna tell you something right now here here i i, I gave everybody a little treat on twitter you know, my mother once told me, it was a compliment, I think. She goes, you could have been the best defense attorney who ever lived. You could break down anybody. And and then I see Aldo last week with a nice treat. I can, can debate with anybody. Here's what I would tell everybody. This is very simple. Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers. One each, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right. One each. McMahon's got two. That's the end of the subject. Jim McMahon's <laughs> got two. Now, he didn't get both with the Bears, right. but he got one with the Bears. I think what McMahon did is more impressive than what Rodgers or Favre have ever done. Win a Super Bowl with the Chicago Bears and stay upright for one season to show us what could have happened had he been healthy. I love that. Yep. That is nice. I love yeah. that. That's it. He's, Aaron Rodgers has won one. And he's cracking up, trying to make jokes. You're 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 overrated. You put it. You're a stat stuffer, but you have nothing to show for it. Yeah. You have one thing. You have as many Super Bowls as Jeff Hofstetler. Congratulations. Mule says I could say something about Aaron Rodgers, but it would be politically incorrect. Who cares? Mule? Who cares? We don't care about Aaron Rodgers. I mean, if anybody thinks that I would run to State Farm because he's on a commercial, they're out of their minds. Mm -hmm. My God. Yep. You know, he's got a nice gig, I, I, I guess. I mean, that's a beautiful gig for him. Yeah. He's get, get, But I, I've never said, hey, B, Aaron Rodgers, State Farm, let's change insurance companies. Yeah. You know. I uh, I have to give King Pookie Nation Alvarez the non-sequitur award of the day. Jerry Reinsdorf <laughs> let Michael Jordan walk. <laughs> Maybe he just started watching the start of the show where we ran the Jerry Reinsdorf, Mike North. Uh, well, here's what I'll say, too. And I did say this. Michael Jordan's the – this is the only guy when Michael Jordan walks up to him, has mm -hmm. to look up to him. Brady. Because mm -hmm. he goes, I got six championships. Brady goes, I got seven. Let's play some golf. That's it. <laughs> in, a, in a tougher sport. In a tougher sport. Yeah. No doubt Where, about it. <laughs> oh, by the way, I won him with – besides Randy Moss and – Jul. I, I, I won one Super Bowl, more than one. Uh, with a Jewish wide receiver. Um, <laughs> we all know, I mean, my, I mean, my God, Julian yeah. Edelman's one of my heroes, man. You know, he's, he's, awesome. he's unbelievable. I won another one. I won a couple with like a guy named Corey Dillon at running back or whatever. <laughs> I mean, he's never had, <laughs> yeah, he's never had the races. Mm -hmm. He had lost for a couple years and Ross delivered. Yeah. But he's that's why Antonio Brown has been huge. Antonio Brown, in most job uh, situations, would have never been brought back in. Very okay? true. Very he, true. There's no chance in broadcast in in broadcasting or media. Aldo knows this. You don't show up to work, and you you're gone. You're never going to get. You know, mm -hmm. it's hard enough to stay in the business as long as we as you do. Okay, but. Antonio Brown's made the difference. By the way, I didn't bring this up with the Bear thing. I think Allen Robinson hopefully will have a big day. They're starting to – he's starting to get some different patterns caught for him. So I'm hoping because he had, he had some catches last week, still probably not what he wants. Um, he dropped one. There was a beautiful – I thought a good pass, but it was a tough, tough play. But I'm hoping he's got to have a good day too on offense. I am I am with you. I'm gonna <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna take a look at the prop bets for Allen Robinson. Yeah, because I think he's gonna catch six or seven passes. Well, you just said the secondary's got two corners up. Oh yeah, uh, so it's, it's a big be break for us. It's yes. a big break for Justin. Yes. What do you think about Bill Lazor's play calling now that uh, Matt Nagy has officially given it up? He 
He had a couple plays I wouldn't have called, but for the most part, I give him an A. Yeah. I give him an he's A. Running the ball, he's running the ball with authority, and he's he, he and he's giving the team confidence. He's wearing down the other team by running, passing. Of course, is uh, something that gives defenses time to rest, unless you're playing against maybe one of the top three, four quarterbacks. Right. That being said, uh, he's been on candy. I can't predict every play like I was doing with with me. Well, I've done it with a lot of bear coordinators. I mean, I could predict what they, you know, it's easy, but he's done that well. So I think, you know, and Nagy now has got the dogs off him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, now, um, here's what I'll also say, because this is my gratuitous Mitch Trubisky uh, mention of the day, even though I already made one to make a point. I think we'd be three and two with Mitch or maybe four and one. So, so, so let's see what happens tomorrow. Because mm-hmm. tomorrow, if we could beat 35, or Sunday, if we could beat 35 to 3, mm-hmm. we're back to square one. Yep. But if we win like 20 to 14, yep. it's looking like 2018 again. Yep. And I'm not, and usually I'm the type of guy, well, if we lose, it depends on what kind of a yep. loss. No, we got to win. The Bears we got to win, but here's what I won't like. Let's say, let's say we lose on a last second field goal by that Crosby guy or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll have our criticisms um, of the Bears. But I, with the new coaches on both sides now, Laser and uh, Desai, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I almost look at this like the White Sox. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, even though, because they've taken off the last couple of years this team. I mean, I actually saw Eddie Jackson in the picture last week, you know? <laughs> so I think, you know what, maybe the defense play, has another game like this. I think the Packers aren't as good as they were, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and I, I think we'll be okay. I'm hoping we'll be okay. I may not touch the game because I like rooting for the Bears. So we'll yeah. see what happens. All right. You mentioned the White Sox. We have to talk about the White Sox because in the three losses they had, they lost a series uh, three games to one. Uh, they were outscored 25 to six. This was a complete breakdown, pitching, uh, hitting, and even managing. I know Tony LaRusso has gotten a lot of kudos, but he even made some bad calls too. I agree. <clears throat> I played a better team. They played a team that is the number one fastball hitting team in baseball. So what does uh, Carlos Rodon do the other night, whose fastball has only been clocked? To 92 miles an hour, mm-hmm. they throw fastballs. Yep. Now, the Astros are so good. This is why I hate them, because they cheated and they didn't have to. It really mm-hmm. bothers me. Mm-hmm. If you're great at something, you don't have to cheat at it. Okay? But to get the edge, you just it just makes me sick. But Dusty's done a good job. Mm-hmm. The fastball <clears throat> came not only from Rodan. They came from almost everybody. Yes. Lance Lynn, what are you doing? 70 out of 78 pitches are fastballs against the number one team in baseball. So I questioned the pitching coach, Cats. I mean, I got to be honest. I was missing Don Cooper. I was missing yeah. Don Cooper. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know if this guy's the deal. If this was the game plan you drew up, mm-hmm. that the White Sox were going to be one pitch pitchers, I got my I got a problem with that. Tony La Russa. I thought shouldn't have started well done. He hasn't pitched in a long time. Yep. I knew this was going to – I should have bet the game. It was – the odds were like minus 150 or something. It wasn't that bad for Houston. Mm-hmm. But I root for the White Sox. I saw the odds. I go, okay, we'll just – we'll sit on this one. We're not going to do anything. So I think that Russo uh, made some mistakes. I thought going out to argue in the eighth inning meant nothing. What are you trying to do, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. <clears throat> No, the Sox pitcher wasn't throwing 98. Not the last game. Yeah, Maybe not- he was. But if it's straight and if you know it's coming, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, <clears throat> I will tell you this. It, they were a better team. And, you know, I don't know. if this, Atlanta went to the playoffs 12 times or something and only won one World Series. It's not easy. But here's what I'm going to tell everybody. Don't give me the Rick Renteria crap. Thank God La Russa won a game. Mm-hmm. Because – the Sox last year played 60 games. I'm sorry. I said that, although last year, if you play 162 games, it might be a different story. Well, La Russa got him there. 
Yeah. In a weak division. So we're going to be there again and again, but we need two starters. With uh, He got him there with a lot of injuries. I mean, that's that lineup was so – But an inferior division. Yeah, very, very oh. true. So, and how, so by the, the way, the pickup that was bad was the second baseman. I thought the kid from Cleveland would do better, Hernandez. I thought he would, but he, he can't hit. Yeah. Something happened to him. They got rid of him, and they took the socks on that deal. Right. Mike, uh, uh, Tony La Russa was asked after the game if he intends to return next season. He says, yeah, I signed the multi-year contract. I, I'm, 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 I plan on coming back. Do you think White Sox management wants him back? I know yes. Jerry Reinsdorf does, but does Rick Hahn want him back? Well, if I'm Rick Hahn, I'm being quiet because a lot of the, the people that he brought in did not produce. I mean, uh, uh, Anderson and some uh, Abreu, I think, or not Anderson and Abreu, about four different White Sox. They listed them today. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't have an extra base hit in the game, in, in the series. Mm-hmm. They didn't hit. Um their field, Grandel stinks behind the plate. I've said that on Bears Bar Room since they picked them up. He stinks behind the plate. He doesn't call as good a game as the guy we used to have, McCann. Maybe La Russa made some mistakes. But defensively, Grandel, when the best thing you could say, what happened to the framing? When they're balls, they're balls. I don't care if you move the ball. So, so $77 million for him. I think the White Sox would have won with other catchers. I think what they got to do is if they're going to keep Grandel behind the plate, you got to pick up a defensive catcher. You can't go in there with Collins, you know, like they did Zach Collins and the, you got the, and the other guy. You got you got to get a better defensive catcher. I think we need an infielder, a defensive infielder for late innings. Yeah. Uh and uh, and I think we need. I tell you what, we need Eloy to get better. Yeah. You know, yeah. maybe wear your hat straight, button your button. <laughs> I mean, I like it. I was a disco guy too, but you know, it doesn't look this good when you pop up. When he hits a home run, I go, look at the chains flying. Look at the shirt open. He's ready to, what a, what a guy. Look at the swagger. But when he pops up, button your shirt. Put your hat straight on. You know what it is. Wait a minute. You were a disco guy. I, yeah. I was. Were you were too? Yeah. I worked, I worked at one. I worked the door at Dr. Shazam's. Everybody from the 70s. And Sheridan and Devon. Believe me. Yeah, me and my two buddies. Well, what happened? You want to hear a story? Sure. <laughs> we're at a bowling alley. Uh-huh. We're, at, we're at Lambert's Bowl down the street. Okay. I'm with a, two buddies of mine, Johnny O'Malley and Mike Samus. We're, we're having some beers. We're like 22. They're building the disco down the street. They opened it up about two weeks mm-hmm. before this guy comes in. He says, hey, how you guys doing? He's having a beer. Like, we're going good. You know, who the hell's this guy? Why mind your own business? We're trying to just have a, we're trying to watch a game. He goes, hey, are you guys regulars here? And my buddy Johnny O'Malley goes, who's asking? He goes, well, I own the place down the street. And O'Malley goes, yeah. And he goes, I'm having some problems at the door with the guys I have. And they're bringing in drugs, some people. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess. I'm ready to up make you guys. If you guys would like, I'd like. I'm looking for somebody to hire from my door. We all took the job. We were there for like two years, awesome. and we, people would come in. My, bu- I was the talker. You know that because of my yeah. street fighting. I'm 19 and 14. My street fighting. <laughs> I had two big boys behind me, so I was the talker. You either give me, you know, and if there was a problem, they got they got taken into the bathroom, flushed down the toilet, and we cleaned the place up. <laughs> that is awesome. good. <laughs> I, I think what was happening is some people were take to bringing them in and taking them inside, and you know you could lose your license. So they, that's a true story. It was awesome. That is made wild. some good money too. I bet you did. After Shazam, folks, from the there was a place called Come On Down, which was in the basement, uh, right across <laughs> from Loyola and the Granada Theater. Oh, I think I remember that place. Oh, yeah. and, yes, and, yes, and here's yes. another thing. That's come. What happened then during the time? That we were working the doors. Right. They lowered it, remember, to 18 oh, for yes, a couple right. of years. Yes, yes. That, that was and I day. said, it's about time. <laughs> and then after about a week, I said, they got to bring it back to 21. These people can't even walk. <laughs> My That's God. Right. And you know what they did? They did. They did. I, I, think somebody, I think a city official went in and somebody went, I've had two drinks. And they were, 
Well, <laughs> 40, 18. Well, okay, we're bringing it back to 21. Uh, Mueller says that he went to the disco sex party at Comiskey Park in the 1970s. Now, that was the brainchild of a yep. very good friend of yours. Uh, and yours, Jeff Schwartz. That's right. That's and right. he thought it up. He's never gotten full credit for it. He worked at the score. He's, a, in my opinion, uh, one of the marketing geniuses mm-hmm. of all time. He thought of that. That alone is good, but he did other things. We had, he also uh, had the score girls back in the day oh, from, the yeah. four, uh, from the agency, had them in jerseys. They made appearances. This guy uh, is as good as it gets, and he's still out there in California. I talked to him a couple times a week, and he's happy. Yeah. He's happy two hours a day, so it's a good thing. <laughs> That's an increase, right? <laughs> yeah, from, from 15 minutes. He had a 15 minute time. <laughs> oh, goodness. All yeah. right. Um, White Sox were done. You anticipate any big moves for the Chicago Cubs during the offseason? Do you think, or they're, or they're just totally dedicated to building through the minor league system and, and, Taking three, four, five years to bring. Oh, you know what's really sad, Frankie Schwindel. That's a that that's a guy that's replaced Rizzo, the beloved Anthony Rizzo. You know why? Because these guys, a lot of them, not just him. I don't know his history, but a lot of these guys, wisdom, they're career minor leaguers, and they couldn't come up because of contracts. Yes. In the old days, if you were better than somebody, you were out. Thank you. Because I, I think there's a couple years that these guys, the, the big stars, didn't come through. Mm-hmm. And then I see where David Ross is going to get an extension. Here's what I'm going to tell everybody. I like to get in my relax mode when I'm right about something. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just get back in the picture here. That would be fun. No, that's okay. kind of a nice Martin Scorsese shot there. That's Oh, yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah, he's here. Hit me, with the light. <laughs> Hit me with the light more like casino where everything there's a light above everybody's head. Exactly. Yeah. You can't believe it. I go, the guys that they're killing somebody, there's a light on the head. <laughs> really? The there's a light on the head. Nobody uses right? Sort of, there's a light on like you. It. I mean, seriously, there's a light on you. <laughs> Every scene in casino has a light on the head. They're all sitting <laughs> on the golf course, light on the head. Uh hey Frankie, they're FBI agents. <laughs> <laughs> there's a light on your head too <laughs> and there's a light on your head <laughs> I look at the mistakes they made in casino and Scorsese's great when he throws ginger out uh-huh, okay uh-huh, on the yeah. ground it's yeah. it's light it's dark outside <laughs> I noticed then that. you look to the left at the window and it's light it's just a studio thing but my god come on Marty <laughs> you know the greatest scene of all time in that one is when he's pounding her in the yeah, talking, giving her shit about uh, the gigolo James Wood, who's oh, excellent it, at the restaurant. Yeah. Oh, you're a real good actress. <laughs> <laughs> Something every married man has said. Yeah, you're a real good actress. <laughs> I forgot we were. I love Casino. I didn't yeah. like it at the movie that I watched at home. It was great. You ever have one of those? Oh yeah. Maybe it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I forgot what I asked you too. You're I did too, because there's a light on your head. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were talking about. You were getting comfortable. We were talking about La Russa. Oh, the, Cubs. the Cubs, the Cubs. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Okay, go ahead. If Tony La Russa was the Cubs manager this year, uh-huh. they would have contended, and they wouldn't have ten losses. They wouldn't have had ten losses in a row early, because they would have been told not to Cadillac in the second base mm-hmm. to play hard. See, when Contreras came out and said there's malingerers, there's guys not coming ready to play. A week later, Rizzo, Baez, and uh, Bryant are gone. And who's there? Contreras, who I think is going to be moved anyway. I'll give everybody else this, too. The San Diego Padres were supposed to win, right? Their manager stinks. Nobody even knows who he is. If they would have hired Tony La Russa, I think there's no fights in the dugout between Machado and Tatis because they had a fight in the dugout. Uh, everybody's hustling. It's not all about one guy like Machado accused Tatis of. So don't tell me managers don't matter. Don't. Because Tony La Russa is beloved, from what I understand, in that locker room. So I'm looking forward to next year. Yeah. Uh, 4,000 Clovers has an interesting question. He says he's not a baseball fan. He doesn't live in Chicago. But how is it decided whether you're a Sox or a Cubs fan? Does it depend on the area of Chicago or your family? Go ahead, Mike. This is a good one for you. 
lost your audio. Did you press them, uh, that, that mute button? I, I think you did. No. How am I now? Perfect. All right. If you're 14, you know, 15, mm -hmm. maybe up to 20, mm -hmm. you could love, I, I don't, I don't think people should tell people how you should root for a team. I think everybody's different. Everybody's different. I mean, if you're telling me that I'm supposed to root for the Atlanta Braves over the Cubs, mm -hmm. okay? I worked at both parks, okay? I, I ended up getting a statue with Jesse Jackson for Ernie Banks. Mm -hmm. I went to the Cub Fantasy Camp. But if you ask me who I want to see win a World Series, it would be the White Sox. I was raised mm -hmm. to like the White Sox, not by my dad or anybody, by me. I looked at, they tried to win every year. They were in with the Yankees. But I took, listen, I was like a 15, 16-year-old kid. And they didn't have the L by White Sox Park. Mm -hmm. And... I took the L all the way to 35th Street as a kid. And believe me, I thought at least 20 times I was in trouble. Because then you had to walk. You had to walk four blocks down 35th. And this is like 69, 70, 71, where race relations weren't the best. But no, everybody left me alone. Nobody messed with me. And I was a little skinny little runt going to sell Cokes. My dad made me go by myself. <laughs> That'll toughen you up. I didn't have a car. <laughs> I went and I made good money, but not like at Wrigley. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this. I didn't go to every White Sox series. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked the Cubs games. Those were 69, 70, 71. Come on. The Sox were, were horrible. Eddie Stanky in the crew. So I got history on both sides, mm -hmm. you know. I went to Bat Day. I went to everything at, at White Sox Park, all the way from from uh, the north side. So I don't have to prove my White Sox allegiance to anybody. Uh, but uh, if I want to root for the Cubs to win, I'm going to root for the Cubs to win too. I am. Yeah. And I'd like to see the Cubs play the Sox in the World Series. And if you wouldn't yeah. want to see that, then, then God bless you. God yeah. bless you. Come yeah. on. I mean, then I'd root for the Sox against – it would be so much fun. Uh, but if you want to see the Cubs win over another town, I think you got the wrong huh? – I, I think your heartbeat will get a little different as you get older. Yeah, I totally agree with you. If you love the city of Chicago, there is no reason why you should not be rooting for both teams. And I mean, if that's... you think I wasn't rooting for Jake Arrieta, Aide Arrieta in 2016, you're crazy. I love the guy. You're out of your mind. Yep. But I mean, don't tell me what kind of fan I'm supposed to be. When I saw Joe Horland pitch, mm -hmm. I saw Tommy John pitch. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I went to games in 64, 65. I saw Rocky Calavito play for the Sox when he was done. Kenny Boyer. Don't get – anybody who wants to get in a debate with me will be end up looking up at the lights when it comes to White Sox baseball. I, I I know Jerry Reinsdorf like this, and in you know the beginning of that thing, I want to congratulate Jerry Reinsdorf and the White Sox for getting to the playoffs and doing what they're supposed to do. While Cup fans are taking shots at us, this is why I become a White Sox fan mostly after your team failed miserably with with mm -hmm. big time guys that want two hundred million dollars. Enough. Yep. yep. 4K says, so it's really a hodgepodge. New Yorkers tell me if you're from Queens, you're generally a Mets fan. From the Bronx, probably a Yankees fan, but it's, it's also family-based. And I think there's yeah. a lot of truth there. Yeah, there is. Of, you know, Northsiders, yeah. Southsiders, family, all there's a lot of different reasons. I grew up cheering the Cubs more because they were on WGN. And my, my signal for the White Sox game on Channel 32 was too – grainy and so i said oh, i can't watch this as good as the cubs so I'm gonna the cubs were on all over the country all over the country yes all over the country but i mean I've, I've always been uh uh prior white Sox. i mean and the white Sox. nobody hurt the white Sox more than me mm -hmm. when they weren't winning and they weren't drawing and i've said it i mean jerry reinsdorf I, I, if the guy asked me for anything i'd do it for him i would i like the guy 
And 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 that thing, the, the beginning, we did that thing a, a, a month or two back. That's misconstrued too, because Jerry's always been pretty damn nice to me. You know, so I'm happy for him. I'm happy for Larusa because I was right mm-hmm. again. How many times can a guy be right? I'll let you know because I'm still rolling. That's why podcasts have become so prominent because there's so many radio stations in this country that are wrong about everything with their people. I mean, there was universal disdain, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, On podcasts absolutely. and everything else for LaRusa. I'm here again. Here we do it. How come I always sense things are going to turn out okay? Right. Everybody thinks I'm negative. I was rooting for the White Sox. I bet you a lot of stout White Sox fans panned LaRusa. So this fan base crap means nothing to me if you don't know the game. Mm-hmm. Chris Watts has a great question. He says, who is best in a fight, a Cub fan or a White Sox fan? Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, that would be a bad. That would and, you know, that wouldn't be good. No, the Cub fans, the Cub fans will say, here's here's a 20. Let's go get a beer, please. <laughs> The only problem is we'd be like the Sox fans are like 300 Spartans. We got to go against an army of millions while we got 15 guys going, come on. That's perfect. That is perfect. Did you see 300 Spartans? That is absolutely perfect. Me and Carmen. Me and Carmen. Here comes Aldo, like gangs of New York, with a thousand guys. You know? The next thing you hear is run. You know what I mean? <laughs> that is outstanding. That is Cup fans, Cup fans are DiCaprio walking out in gangs of New York with that big crew. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we're and, and Sox fans, if they find them, are the first row guys that got gunned down, for God's sake. My God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it is time for Yeah. <laughs> Mike North gives uh What's the music? Couple- no music? You don't hear it? Oh, I don't have my headphones on. Sorry. Hey, anyway. Hey, okay, yeah, good. I heard it. <laughs> I don't hear it, but what else is new? Anyway, <laughs> I want you to look up something. I've been hearing about this guy. You look up Arizona. Look up the odds for Arizona. Okay. And yeah, tell me what uh, they're playing because I'm going to surprise everybody. Arizona Cardinals football? Yeah. Uh, pro team, not the uh, other pro team that's in college. Uh, let us see. It got. We've got. We got. Um, what the heck? Oh, the Browns. Cardinals plus three on the road in Cleveland. The money line is Cardinals plus one fifty. Yeah. The over under forty nine point five. I almost lost the game two weeks ago. With Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. He was off. I think he's a hot and cold guy. I think if Mitch played with in Cleveland or Justin Fields or other guys, maybe they could put up 14 points against people. Last mm-hmm. week, they come out of the box. They look really, really good. It seems to be a love-hate thing with, with Baker Mayfield. We've been there with our quarterbacks. Arizona, I watched. Um, San Francisco's coach, Shanahan, I have no respect for him. He had fourth and four or something from the 50 with seven minutes left. They were down 13 to 10. He went for it with seven minutes left. Doesn't make it. And Arizona in four play scores a touchdown. Now I've never been suspicious of anybody, but my God, there's sports books all over the place. And some aunt or uncle got a tip because I can't believe anybody. I'm sick of people. You know how many points are left on the board in the first quarter of games now? that go for it on fourth and two, fourth and three from the goal line or from the run and don't make it. So I watched this guy. And I I saw him gift wrap for Arizona. Mm -hmm. Arizona should have lost that game. But I also saw Arizona. Murray, J.J. Watt, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew, Mm -hmm. some good players. I liked the over at the beginning of the year. I'm only picking one game. But I have confidence. And it's going to be three. Just like I predicted for Cincinnati fans, it would go up to three from two and a half against Green Bay. Mm-hmm. It will be three on the road. Uh, even if it isn't, I'm taking the Cardinals as my lone pick here. We're one and one last week. We're taking the Cardinals on the road at uh, plus three. I'm going to take it at or plus two and a half either way. Uh, and the money line minus 105, you're not going to 
you're not going minus 1,200. So you can almost bet it, uh, uh, you know, I think it's like 130, 120, whatever you want to do. But I'm not going to do the money line. I'm just taking the number. There you go. By the way, I hope you're right for Chris Watts's mom's sake because <laughs> he's betting his mom's house. The guy's got three room additions since he started coming with us. For, you know what I mean? The guy, I never got, I never got a thank you note. Everything, you know, I don't, I don't get a, a box of steaks. Nothing. Well, steaks up, steaks up twenty. I don't care. If steak goes up a hundred percent. Steaks up twenty percent right now. Meats up twenty percent in this country. You're not breaking me. I'm having a nice steak on Sunday. And Saturday, but uh, yeah, Chris, I, I'm praying for you and me. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, right. All of us. All right. Uh, that is our show for tonight. I just want to let people uh, know that we've got a, a schedule change tonight. It's Buffon 55 at 7 p.m. And then How's he doing? he's doing great. He is fired up. He actually thinks the uh, Bears are going to win Sunday. And uh, hey, that's two of us. John, Buffon, How about you? You think the Bears are going to win? I do. I do. I do think they're going to win. Yeah. That's three of us. <laughs> that's bad <laughs> that is bad and we'll find out what Danny Shimon thinks at 9pm he's got some tape uh, evaluation of the last game and we'll get his thoughts on the upcoming game and then of course we've got Crosstalk, Crosstalk the Parisi brothers at 2pm I they, they had a video the other day and I, I couldn't get the volume up and I still heard what they were saying <laughs> I could read lips listen to us or else <laughs> Listen to us around <laughs> the Parisians. Like the Tom Grayson used to say. Frank Sinatra never asked me to come downstairs to the bar. He told me. Yes. <laughs> That's the way it is. By, by the way, I was I <laughs> forgot what I, Oh, by the way, uh, Joey Parisi, the younger of the two brothers, he owns a and operates a cheesecake uh, company. And nice. the cheesecakes are outstanding. Where are at? From what? What's the name of the place? Uh, I'll, I'll get you all the information for next week's show. Good for him, man! Oh man, they are outstanding. They, he brought. So he's got some here. dough, this guy, huh? Yeah, he's making some money. He's, you know, but of course, it could all be a money laundering place. I don't, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just. Don't kidding. start that. You'll have every group after you. Although <laughs> he could, he could be like Paulie. I don't know anything about the the cheesecake business, but you know, I'll help you out. You know, good fellow. <laughs> yes, help you out. Exactly. No, we're not like that. I'm half Italian. I can joke. Yeah. I have an Italian name, Aldo. I can joke. Yes, you <laughs> Well, yeah, that is an Italian name. Uh, all right, everybody. Thanks for watching us live. And remember to tell your friends. The show is available on YouTube. iTunes, YouTube, wherever you want. It'll be available. Talk to you later. Bye -bye. See you.